so I think we can go ahead and get started um, and convene this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for July 7th. Um, Holly, can you call the roll, please? Director Mayhood. Here. Vice President, excuse me, that was President Mayhood. Vice President Ackman is not present, absent. Director Pulse. Here. Director Hill. Here. Director Smalley. Here. Okay, thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to the closed session agenda? Rick? Uh, are there any additions or deletions to the closed session agenda? He might be frozen. Yeah, it looks like he's frozen. Oh, I'll, I'll pipe in then. There, there, there are. I, I'm pretty sure there are none. Okay, all right. Um, then we'll continue on. Um, then we come to the point at which we have oral communications on the topic of the closed session, but I don't see any um, attendees outside of the usual um, usual suspects here. So I think we don't have to worry about that. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and adjourn to um, close session. 6.30. So um, I think I will go ahead and reconvene our meeting. Um, the regular section and Holly, can we have a roll call vote, please? President Mayhood. Here. Vice President Ackman is absent. Director Foles. Here. Director Hill. Here. Director Smalley. Here. Gail, is it fair to say that Jamie's absent due to power outage? Yes, so it appears yeah. from the map that Rick sent me. Um, so the question is, is Rick, you um, you sent me an email saying that it looks like something like 1,900 people are out of power in the Valley? According to, to PG&E, the amount of customers out of power are 1,966. And when you look at the map, some of it may be out of our uh, district or out of our service area, but the majority of it is in our service area. Down all of downtown Ben Lomond, all of Brookdale, um, uh, Glen Arbor, Quail Hollow. So it's a significant amount. Okay. Um, I, I will defer to legal counsel about what we need to do in this um, particular situation. Um, I, part of what uh, makes me unsure is whether people are even if their internet is out, is if they're capable of phoning in, um, that would mean they have access. But I don't know, um, you know, if that if that's the case. If cell phone towers are down, maybe people can't phone either. So um, I'm loath to um, call off this meeting because there's nothing really on it that's very controversial, and we do need to get the um, the roles um, switched over to Santa Cruz if we can, but I will defer to legal counsel and the rest of the board's opinion on that. So Gina, why don't you weigh in? Sure. Well, I um, I, I forwarded uh, President Mayhood the rule just before the meeting. Um, when we're conducting these hybrid remote meetings, it says in the event of a disruption which prevents the public agency from broadcasting the meetings, members of the public using the call-in option or internet-based service option. Uh, and it goes on, the body shall take no further action on items appearing on the meeting agenda until public access to the meeting via the call-in option or internet-based service option is restored. So there is an or. So if phone access is available, the district can go forward with the meeting. Um, but I, I think there is a, a factual question here as to whether phone access may not be available in some area. Well, you know, a lot of people have switched over to digital voice and unless they have um, power backup, they may not have um, 
telephones, home telephone service. A lot of people on cellular. Cellular would be a little bit more reliable, but again, it's not 100% either. Um, I did have some questions about drop dead dates on the agenda item. Rick, do you want to address uh, that? We, um, Holly uh, did some quick research during um, when we were offline, and, and so did Gina. And I think we have what, Holly, August? August 1st. August 1st. The bigger question, and I'll refer to council uh, about a remote meeting, um, if we're covered from the last time. Yeah, well, from emails between Holly and I, uh, the district is covered through uh, July 16th. So the July 18th budget and finance meeting, is that right, Holly, July 18th budget and finance? No, we wound up canceling that um, meeting altogether. And so we don't have any other meetings uh, till the 21st. So we, th that's not an issue. That, that meeting wound up being completely canceled. But that's why we added the remote authorization to this agenda was for that meeting that we wound up canceling. So Okay, so there would be no impact on the regularly scheduled district meetings. Right, on the 12th. Okay, so we would just instead defer the uh, reauthorization until the beginning of the next meeting is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. And Rick, you were saying that we don't need to um, have a resolution regarding uh, the um, delinquent charges until August 1st? That's correct. So that means that we could talk about this at the second board meeting of the month? That's correct. Okay, well, given that, then I guess I would recommend that uh, we just go ahead and adjourn um, so that because it's not absolutely essential that we do these and just so that we stick with the letter of the law. And, you know, it, it, kind of like what Director Fultz said, I couldn't even dial in. My cell phone was dead right. as soon as the power went off. I tried to dial in and work with you and you all and, and Jana, and my phone just kept failing, so I just drove what, in. What, so what, happens, what happens sometimes is the cell service gets completely jammed because everybody tries to get on it yeah. and it yeah. blocks, you know, service, so... It's also, it may have some of the towers down too from the PowerPoint. Yeah, very well. If they don't have much battery on. Yep. So. Okay. okay. Sounds good. A procedural yeah. matter the district will need to post, post a notice of adjournment pertaining to this meeting. But if the district does not adopt, if the board doesn't adopt an order specifying a different date and time for the meeting, it will simply uh, by default continue with the next regular meeting on July 21st. Okay. So we can do that and um, can uh, maybe I should at, before adjourning simply say that there is nothing to report out of closed session so that that goes into the minutes of this aborted meeting. Yes, Holly. And may I also suggest we do have two attendees that because we have oh. members of the public. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. Let me... Um, Uh, well, I suppose what we could do is if those, if those attendees, uh, maybe we should do oral communications in case those two attendees want to do something or say something, would that be acceptable? I mean, they may not, but, but why, why don't I just allow that and say that, okay, this is, <laughs> this is the time for oral communications on, um, issues that are within the purview of the district, but are not on tonight's agenda. Um, would any of the two attendees like to say anything to the board in that regard? Okay. All right. Um, so uh, sorry, Cynthia and Mark, that you had to show up for this, but looks like we'll see you in, in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. So without objection, um, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>